Hello everybody. Grab your happy mug. And let's crack on with uh, tutorial one. So, we've got question 2.1 to look at. Here I have got this problem should be straightforward. And what we want to do is set up our free body diagram. Now pulling force P of 10 kilonewtons force Q 30 kilonewtons first have a think about the problem that we've got here overall what we kind of expecting looking at this well I throw in that uh, this has 0.5 meters and this has 0.4 meters we're pushing down quite a lot here and we've got quite a long section here so overall I'm expecting this thing to contract alright um, now one way to draw this uh, uh, sort of a more 3D shape is we could split up now 30 to represent that uh, we've got like 3D we're going to work in 15 kilonewtons a piece and then on my free body diagram I want to draw 10 newtons going off in this direction right here so I must have a reaction here so referring back to the question that seems to be point C so RC and that's our badly drawn free body diagram and we want to determine the internal force so remember that these are all the external forces being applied what we're going to do now is something completely crazy and mad. We're going to pretend that we can cut through this free body diagram and that we can basically separate it a little bit. All right. So that's like this pen here. If I push 10 newtons from this side I've got to push 10 newtons from that side to make sure that that pen doesn't shoot off anywhere. So 10 newtons are being pushed either side. Now, if I say to myself, what is the internal force where my thumb is? Okay, so I've, so I've cut the body and I'm exposing the internal force here. The internal force is also going to be 10 newtons. So I've cut the cut the body, thrown that bit of the body away, and now there's, there's this exposed internal force. Can you see it? All right. And that internal force is going to be pushing back towards the force that you're pushing there. And what we do is we define forces to be the internal force direction by default. We define it as pointing away from uh, our initial point there but, um, it's like we imagine this to be like a node like we're doing a free body diagram like a framework diagram okay so the f internal force is pointing away now because my f uh, internal force has to push back to that that force being applied that means that's a negative force so that tells me when it's negative it's in compression Okay, so 
I'm going to make a cut. Now, I can make a cut through my body. It's a bit like I'm doing a method of sections. Remember this from the first year. I can make a cut through the top part of the body or the bottom part of the body. Uh, I'm going to choose to take the cut through the top part of the body. And the reason why I'd want to do that is because I know that value. Whereas I don't know the RC, I, mean, I can easily work it out, but I don't know what it is. So the question's asking me to find internal forces, I'm not saying anything about the reaction, so we'll do that. So what we're going to do is do another free body diagram, and we'll only include the top bit. So we've got 10 kilonewtons going off in that direction, and then we've got this internal force which we define. When I do this, I then set up what I think the sections are. So that's section 1 and that's section 2 in my model. So I've got this internal force, section 1, pointing away and then I'm going to apply a Newton's law. I'm going to sum up the forces in the y direction. I'll take positive to be uh, upwards and so therefore I see I've got 10 take away F1 zero and that gives me f1 equals 10 and I'm working in kilonewtons okay so f1 is 10 kilonewtons it's a positive so therefore I know that that bit of the internal section is going to be in tension all very straightforward um, and we want to find now the internal force on section 2 so notice I've taken my 30, split it up 1550 to represent the fact that we've got some kind of flange. We've got a uniform force being applied over this section here. Okay. So we need to draw another free body diagram of the problem. So we've got a top section. Then we've got the bottom section. Then we've got Fifteen, fifteen. So these are external forces being applied. So add them up together. We've got the thirty. So notice the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can sort of like put these forces outside of my body. Uh, actually, this force is going upwards, isn't it? We've got ten going upwards, and now we're into section two here. So we're going to have this defined as F2. So that's my free body diagram now. I'm into the lower section. Notice I haven't bothered working out the reactions or anything. So again we're going to apply Newton's law that we're going to sum up the forces in the y direction. Okay. And what have I got there? So I've got 10, take away 15, take away 15, and uh, take away F2 equals 0. Okie dokie, so that gives me F2 equals fir uh, take on to that side, so minus 30 minus 10 uh, plus 10. Yeah, so take it over to that side plus ten. Yeah, so we that gives me minus twenty kilonewtons. So that tells me that section is in compression. So that is actually in compression than you'd kind of first guess looking at the problem. You'd think, okay, this this is going to be pushing down by about thirty. But in actual fact, in this particular section, because we've got this upward force in there. It's going to be pushing down in this particular section minus 20. Or rather, pushing down 20, rather. So it's in compression. So, let's recap. Top section, we've got 10 pointing away, 10 pointing away there. So they are the internal force, that's the internal force in the top section. Okay. Bottom section, 
Right, so this is pointing away with minus, and that's with a 10, and a 10. Bottom section, well, by definition, I have to find things as pointing away, so they're negative. So therefore, you can say this is the same as top section with 10 pointing away, 10 pointing away, and the bottom section, we can reorientate our arrows. I don't like to do this, but the internal forces are going that way. Now, this often confuses students because you've got to remember that these are internal forces. So internal forces are reacting against external forces. So the arrows appear to be going the wrong direction than what your mind is set to thinking what is something in tension and what is something in compression. So notice this section here is in tension. However, the internal forces appear to be making making the um, the uh, internal substance squash. Well, no, because these are internal forces. Got to remember, internal and external forces are different things. And so these are reactions to your external forces. So when they're pointing in this direction, it's actually being pulled apart. The external forces are pulling it apart, whereas the internal forces are trying to resist that. And that's what we're seeing here. And same thing here. So with the internal forces here, they appear to be pulling apart the bar. No, they're not. These are the forces that are reacting against the forces that are trying to squash the bar. So they're doing always doing the opposite to kind of what you're thinking. So that's in tension and that's in compression. Now what I prefer is I prefer to always keep my forces pointing away. I kind of imagine this to be a bit like a node. Pointing away and then setting this to be negative as opposed to reorientating the arrow. But you'll, you'll find in some textbooks that they like to reorientate the arrow back to um, a particular section start position. So, so we know our two internal forces. So the top one is uh, in tension uh, by 10 kilonewtons. Bottom one is in compression by 20. And that was a lot of hoo-ha for not, not much uh, to work to determine the internal forces. Determine the amount of stress at the midpoint of each section. Okay, stress is force divided by area. And so what's the stress being experienced in a particular midsection? Well, it'll be the internal force. So the stress for the top section will be the 10 kilonewtons divided by its area so it's uh, 20 millimeters in diameter so that'll be the top one and then for the bottom one um, that has minus 20 I'll keep the minus there to remind me that's in compression and the bottom one has a diameter of 60 millimeters. Okay. And so you should get for your top section 31.8. And for your lower section, minus 7.07 .07 megapascals. So we're expecting the top one to be in more and uh, experiencing more stress. Got a smaller thing that we're we're trying to squash, whereas the things the, the lower section is bigger. So the stress is going to be distributed wider, so it's going to have a lower amount of stress. Rightio, last bit. Determine the deformation of the whole steel rod. So here we're going to be using, uh, in a f I would guess, this formula.
Okay, so they're they're doing something different in the text, but we we we'll use Arnold's formula here. In effect, so notice this is um, got the force divided by area. I could reuse stresses here, couldn't I? That'd be one option. Um, so Young's modulus is 200. So we could do that. The whole thing is going to deform by the sum of forces times by the sectional lengths divided by Young's modulus times by the area. So that's going to be force 1, L, whoops, L1, Young's modulus, uh, oh, what am I doing? I'm thinking ahead to the next equation. So that's F2, L2, E2, A2. Okay. So notice we've got force over area. We've already calculated the stresses. Let's reuse them. So we could go stress 1, L1 over E1. Uh, the whole thing is the same E, so let's drop the E's. Plus stress 2, L2 over E. Okay, so uh, stress 1, I've got 31 point times 10 to the 6. L1 is uh, 0.4. And E is 200 times 10 to the, uh, 10 to the 9. Uh, here we've got a minus seven point zero seven times ten to the six. Can't fit it in, and that's a point five divided by two hundred times ten to the nine. Okay, they do it differently in the book, so I better check my answer. Thirty one point. Whoops. 31.86 times 0.4 divided by 200 to the 9. Take away 7.07. 6 times by 0.5 divided by 200 point to 9. Okay. Okay, so I'm completely wrong. So we've uh, uh, next thing I'll press the edge button. Uh, kind of gone the wrong way. I don't really want to work in micrometers. So that'd be point zero four five nine millimeters. Okay. Um, so yeah. So I've I am wrong. Because I looked at this and I said to myself, right, well, I'm applying more force down here. This is a longer section. This thing is overall going to squash. In actual fact, put the numbers in, the thing actually gets pulled apart. Why? Because I hadn't considered this is thicker. So I've been pretty thick. Okay, so correct answer. My a guesstimate that the whole thing was going to get uh, going to get extended however was wrong there we go